I recently made a video about the Blackmagic camera app, which adds a ton of versatility to your iPhone's camera. And from what I can tell, the app works on every iPhone from at least the 10R and newer, which covers quite a few years. So if you have an iPhone and you don't have the app, you absolutely should get the app. But one of the most magical things tucked away in the Blackmagic app settings is the option to enable a clean HDMI output. Previously, if you use an HDMI adapter with an iPhone, you see everything on the phone screen, which means if you're using the camera app, you see all of the camera info and it's not a clean feed. It's a, it's a dirty feed. But with the Blackmagic app's clean HDMI out, you can now get a clean output from the camera through the app, but on the back of your phone, you can still control all of the settings and functionality for the app itself. This means you can run your phone's camera through the Blackmagic app into something like an HDMI capture card, maybe a cam link or an ATEM mini. In fact, this whole time I've been recording into Ecamm Live through my A10 Mini and with the press of a button, I can switch over to my phone's camera right here because this is an HDMI source in my ATEM just like my Sony FX3 is. Now I am limited to 1080p through the ATEM Mini so this video is not in 4K, but that's a limitation of the ATEM and not the phone or the app. And now what you might notice as I switch between my main camera and my phone, is that the audio is not perfectly in sync. It's backstreet, it's not in sync. Now I did a whole bunch of tests using 23.98, true 24, 27.930 frames per second in the camera, the ATEM, the phone app, and Ecamm, and I found that I got the best results using 30 frames per second across all devices. If I go over to Ecamm and you see the infinite screen here, I'm also using a five frame mic delay and that helps this camera to be in sync. But no matter what I did, I couldn't get this camera and this camera to be perfectly in sync. There's a little bit of latency here, and I think that this has to do with the app itself, maybe how things are being processed. So maybe this sort of processing is something that Blackmagic could improve in a future update. I don't know if that's possible, but dealing with the latency and the lag of the app to make it more compatible with other HDMI sources would really be fantastic. So the big takeaway there is as awesome as it is to use your phone as an HDMI source, it is definitely not perfect for every workflow. This latency could be a problem if you plan to mix phone footage in with regular real camera footage for dialogue or talking scenes or something along those lines. If you're editing, it's not really a big deal because you can resync things. So right now, this is a little bit out of sync, but through the magic of Final Cut Pro, I can make it perfectly in sync and then it sounds great. And I can go back over here and everything is also still in sync. But if you're not editing or you don't have the time, you're unable to edit, or the project you're doing is a live stream where you can't edit or some other event or something where there's no editing that's possible, then this latency could potentially cause issues. And something that's tricky about this is even though I'm using that five frame delay in Ecamm Live, or I could set an output delay in the ATEM itself, that applies to both of these sources at the same time. It applies to the entire ATEM, whether that's through Ecamm or the ATEM or through OBS or whatever, I don't know of a way, and I don't think this is possible, to do separate audio delays for each input on an ATEM. If I'm wrong about that, I would love to be wrong about that, so please let me know if I'm wrong about that, but for all the years I've been using ATEMs, that's not something that I've seen possible, or something I've figured out how to do at least. Now, all that being said, if you're using a setup that is all phone-based, you have multiple phones together as HDMI sources, this also won't be an issue because they'll all have the same latency, the same lag. So when you add in your audio delay, everything will sync up. The issue really only arises when you're mixing a phone camera with a real dedicated camera. But even then, if you're not using your phone for something that involves like lip syncing or musical instruments or something, if you're using your phone for some sort of secondary angle or a top-down shot, where it's actually not gonna be that noticeable if things are a couple of frames out of sync, then this really won't be an issue. So for example, if I take my phone and now I place it up here, I'm using my Elgato wave arm because it has that height extension as a, an overhead shot for the phone. And then I can just run the cable out of the way. And now I have this nifty top down shot. And even though it's not perfectly in sync for the most part, I don't really think that's going to matter a lot of the times. If I'm showing you how to do something or I'm building something here, you can still hear me and see what I'm doing and it works out just fine. And 
Right now I'm using the super wide angle lens on this phone, but I can switch over to the telephoto lens, for example, and now I don't even have to reframe the shot. I can just show you a top-down shot of whatever I'm using. So as far as I can tell, this latency is the biggest hurdle at the moment when it comes to using your phone as an HDMI source with an ATEM Mini. And there's also a pretty big difference in image quality, of course, even though my iPhone 14 Pro has great cameras, my Sony FX3 with a Sony prime lens on it has significantly better image quality and a full frame sensor than the phone does. This camera's image sensor is bigger than the phone's entire camera array, like everything, just the sensor there. So it makes sense, sir, then, that this is gonna look a little bit better than a phone. In fact, I recently did a whole video that dives into real cameras versus phone cameras, and it's really fun because I go back to like 15 plus years of smartphone cameras versus dedicated cameras. So if you wanna kinda go down this image quality rabbit hole a little bit further, definitely check out that video. It's one of my favorite videos I've ever made. But overall, I think it's really fun to be able to use a phone or phones as part of a setup like this, whether they're the main camera, and this is how your whole thing is being done, or they're just a secondary or tertiary angle that you're using, especially considering this Blackmagic app that I'm talking about is totally free. So how does this all work? How do you actually get your phone's HDMI output into an A10 Mini because phones don't have HDMI output ports natively. So you definitely need an HDMI, I think Apple calls these an audio video adapter. When it comes to lightning to HDMI adapters, there are so many options out there, but if you're going to be using your phone regularly or in anything where like, the quality actually matters, I strongly encourage you to go with the official adapter, which this is not. This is being used with the official adapter right now. And it is more expensive, but it is so much more reliable and just gives you a way better overall result. Because I originally bought this $20 adapter from Amazon, and even though it is MFI made for iPhone certified, so it should work in theory just the same as the original adapter, it is significantly more unreliable and it doesn't kick in like right away. Let's see if I can show you actually. So if I switch over to the phone and I unplug the regular adapter, connect this cheap adapter, let's switch back to a blank screen, see what happens when I plug it in. Anything, anything. Well, oh, there we go. We get this weird screen. <laughs> and then here I am. And what you might notice is now I'm not even taking up the full frame. So in order to use this, I have to zoom in on this input source, either through the ATEM or through Ecamm Live to take up the whole frame. But the bigger thing, I don't know if I can show you this without making you motion sickness, but the bigger thing I noticed is a lot of time when I'm doing this, it will give me these weird video artifacts. It almost looks like video interlacing where you can see like lines coming in from the side. I don't know if I can, of course it's not gonna work as I'm trying to show it, it's not gonna happen, but it's it was a huge issue as I was testing things out in addition to just not being ultra reliable to begin with. So I'm sure that there are some third party adapters that work really well, but for example, here's the Apple one. I'll connect this to the HDMI source. We'll go back to the phone, plug it in, and there we go. It just shows up. There was no weird screen with like a random QR code and info on it. And this is filling up the frame 16 by nine just perfectly. And even though these are just cheap plastic dongles, the Apple one is actually built a bit better and it seems like the connectors are higher quality. So in my opinion, it was worth the extra dollars for that dongle, the extra dongle dollars over there. But a great thing about all these adapters is they also have a lightning port, which means you can connect your phone to power while you're using it. So while you're streaming with your phone, you don't have to worry about draining the battery. If you're doing something that's a really long event or whatever, you never have to worry about your phone battery running out because you can power it while you're also using it as a camera HDMI source. And if you've got a newer iPhone or you wanna use this setup with an iPad that has a USB-C output, Apple does make a USB-C to HDMI AV adapter as well. I haven't used it with a USB-C iPhone myself though, but there's really no reason it shouldn't work exactly the same as this one does. So I guess the last question to ask is why? Why would you wanna use your phone as an HDMI source and go through this whole setup, especially because there are so many other tools out there like NDI where you can use your phone as a wireless source or Apple even allowing you to use your iPhone as a webcam natively through Mac OS. And to be honest, 
I think all of those options are really great. This is just another tool. It's just adding another tool to your toolkit that you can use when and if you need it. And I do think that it has some pretty strong advantages because personally, I don't know if there's any science behind this, but I just trust a wired connection more than a wireless one. So if I'm using my phone for something over a long period of time, I definitely get nervous that a Wi-Fi connection is going to drop out or an NDI connection might drop out. But now when I'm hardwired in via HDMI, I have a lot of confidence that this is going to be on and working when I need it. This setup also opens up the possibility to use the iPhone with Windows computers because the ATEM minis are Mac and PC compatible. So it doesn't matter what HDMI source you connect to them, you'll be able to use it with your computer. Or if you wanna ditch the computer altogether, you can stream directly from an ATEM mini. So that means the phone or phones or cameras or combination can run directly into an ATEM directly out to a stream without the need for anything else if you wanted to do that. And a really cool thing is it's a great way to put some older phones to use. If you have an old phone that's just been sitting around in a drawer, now it can be a second or third angle or something cool for a live stream. There's still a lot of life left in your older devices. And now this is another cool way that you could use those. And again, that Blackmagic app is totally free. So if you haven't checked it out yet, you should because it is totally awesome. And speaking of things that are totally awesome, thank you to everyone who helps support my channel through Patreon and YouTube channel memberships. The perks are the same between YouTube and Patreon. If you'd like to support the channel and then you can get your name on screen like these fine folks right here. And if you wanna know more about the Blackmagic camera app or creating with an A10 mini, check out one of these super rad videos.